Today we're going to talk to you about, obviously, stimulus and response and what the space in between that. What that's really about is share ideas that you actually have the power within you to decide how you respond. And I'm going to start with really talking about how you then turn that into thriving and not just surviving in times of change. Because we know change is now, it's a constant and it's actually in workplaces as well, there's so much change happening, it's very easy to become stressed, anxious around all those changes. So I'm going to tell you a story, I'm going to tell you my story, my personal story. Take you back to August 2005. I was in the UK and I was actually enjoying a beautiful summer's day. And they do happen. If anyone's from the UK, we do occasionally get nice summer's days. And I was sitting in the garden with my family, holding my three year old son and watching my 15 month old little girl running around. I then went on to a call, a phone call with my manager. I thought, oh, she's just checking up to see how I'm going. No. There was a bombshell just about to hit me. I was told I no longer had a job. There was nothing for me to go back to. That was the last thing I actually imagined was going to happen on that day. I'd actually been really happy, obviously, enjoying family enjoying having a new baby, and obviously enjoying the weather too. My immediate response was anger, uh, disbelief, those usual things that you get when something comes out of the blue, when you're not in control. I started to blame. I started to blame my manager, I started to blame the organisation, and among, among all the other things, it was actually felt really unfair. Because actually, it's taken a bit of my enjoyment of having a new baby, and in that family circumstance, it invaded my privacy in that respect. And I felt really, um, really, really angry, as I said before. So, that was 2005. I fought for a little while, and then moved on. I had other priorities forgot all about it. Arrived in Perth in 2007, settled in, found new friends, we all really going along, life was going great. 2009, sitting in a room with my then manager, he was fantastic, he was great, brilliant, we got on really well. And I can't remember what it was, but he said something and I just burst into tears. I was like, what the hell happened there? What's going on? Everything's fine. Why did I suddenly cry? And he looked at me and was a bit scared too. He was thinking, oh, what have I got here? What's going on? And I really, I just had to go home. I said, sorry, I need to go and find out what's happening. So I suppose I spent a couple of weeks thinking, okay, so how am I going to work out where that came from? What was that all to do with? And it made me realise it actually was what had happened four years previously. Suddenly, whatever he said, whatever that trigger was, triggered something in me that caused me to be really emotional. I thought, you know what, I can't afford to go through the rest of my life with that. There's something still there that needs to be sorted through. So I decided to look and I thought, you know what, I didn't really need, I didn't think anything counselling, I wasn't feeling that, that level, but I really needed to, to explore what was happening. So I decided to go for some coaching. And actually, rather than one-on-one -on -one coaching, I actually decided to do some group coaching. So has anybody in the room ever done any group coaching? Yeah, a few nods, a few hands, yep. It was a really safe environment, but very intensive, the way I did the group coaching. I had actually eight full days, which were split into two, set, two groups of four. Through that process of coaching, that group coaching environment, feeling safe, I actually started to uncover what my, some of my beliefs were, those values, 
the emotions, what had driven that response. So it enabled me to really get more self-aware and understand what was actually holding me back. Because at the end of the day, all those things were actually holding me back potentially in terms of maybe not being good enough, uh, failing in some way. What was it? So I actually explored all of those things in a very safe environment through group coaching. And it was really powerful because it's, that's why I'm here actually on the stage today. Because if I'd look back probably to 2009, I would never have even had the confidence to come and stand and talk in front of an audience of total strangers. But by learning that and understanding more about myself, it's enabled me to take control back. So I no longer have that so much emotional response to something that even a trigger I didn't even know existed. So for me, that group coaching exercise was actually transformational. So that's my story. So what's that got to do with change resilience and thriving in an era of change? I'd like to invite you, as you're sitting in your seats, to get very comfortable and join me in closing your eyes and relaxing and remembering a time when you were in your personal power. Thinking back to that time when everything seemed free and easy and you were in a flow state. And as you close your eyes, really tap into what you heard what you were saying, what others were saying, and how you felt. And that feeling of being complete in your personal power, I want you to turn that up to a very high level so that you feel that power throughout your whole body and it's resonating in every limb and every being of your cell. And as you remember that experience of being in your personal power, as you open your eyes, I want you to bring that moment of personal power as a resource into the room for exploring that space between stimulus and response. Has anybody heard of Viktor Frankl? Yeah, so Man's Search for Meaning. This was a book he wrote which documents his time when he was a prisoner of war in a concentration camp in, in World War II. And that book documents in the first part his experiences of being in that camp and what he noticed about the stories that people were telling themselves and how that then impacted their ability to survive and thrive in that environment. And during his time there, he worked from a position of purpose, from that powerful personal space that he created within himself. And this quote really emphasizes how creating that space between something that's happening to you and your response to it, that's where your power lies. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to just explore some of the tools that we use as coaches and explain to you the experience you've already had as we've been speaking just in these very few minutes. So the first thing to remember about the ability to not only survive but thrive is that you always have a choice. When we work with people in a coaching environment, sometimes they say, I don't have a choice. And our response to that is, really? What if you did have a choice? Let's just imagine you've got a magic wand what if you did have a choice? And then suddenly, because we've created that pause in that click were habitual response, they can come up with, actually, well, I suppose I could do this, or perhaps I could do that. And suddenly, in exploring that space between that event and the response, they realize that they do have true choices. Now, choices always have a consequence. So you always have to be aware of what the consequences of the choices are. And that's the other thing that we explore in coaching as well, 
It's understanding, okay, I've made this choice. What might be the potential consequences of that choice? So we explore that in that space in between. The key thing to remember is that when we're responding to something, or rather reacting to something, what we want to do is create that resourceful state. So in those couple of minutes, for those of you who joined in with that very, very brief, meditative, um, mindful thinking process, you've created a space for you to explore a resource within you. And in creating that space, you are able to respond. So responsibility is the ability to respond rather than react. So sometimes choice transpires as a choice between either or. And when we first start coaching people, or coaching with people, I should say, we explore that initial thinking around, OK, well, it's an either or. And then as we start to go deeper, as they trust the coaching process, as they trust you as their coach, they then start to explore some of the stories that they're actually telling themselves. And some of these stories might be positive and some of them might be negative. And what we really want to understand is, what are the positive stories that we can build on that then become a resource for you to actually take forward and make a different choice about what you're going to do? So when people say, for example, I don't have time to do that, that's a story that they're telling themselves. Perhaps what it really means is, that's not a priority for me now. And if you say, that's not a priority for me now, what have you just done? You've made a choice. So understanding the stories that you're actually telling yourself enables you to take a different perspective. So in that space in between, the stimulus and response, we're actually coaching so that you have a choice and you can reflect and develop that self-awareness about those stories that you're actually telling yourself. So in this very short presentation around stimulus and response, thinking about, as you sit there, the stories that you might be telling yourself, which ones could you change so that you do actually have a choice? So think back to Viktor Frankl. He had a choice about how he responded to that dreadful situation that he was in, and he chose to inhabit his personal power. So think about the stories that you're telling yourself and choose the stories that are actually going to give you your personal power. And in doing that, not only will you survive when things around you are changing, you'll actually have a resource so that you can thrive. What we do is we help people create those adaptive systems for change. And in coaching people either one-to-one -one or in group, groups, we actually help people learn what you don't learn in school. You don't learn that reflective self-awareness space in school, typically. Um, some schools now are starting to teach that, but certainly when I was at school, we didn't learn that. So what we do is we help people in organizations, we help individuals create that reflective space so that they develop that self-awareness. And so, when you're given a choice, you actually stand in your personal power and you take responsibility and you own that choice. So there you have it, the space in between stimulus and response. Thank you for listening. Any questions? <laughs>